coming to you from the makeshift upmarket studio in the beautiful Ojai Valley of Southern California. This is Upmarket, a podcast about the business of real estate photography and media. My name is Reed Fish. I'm the CEO and a co-founder of Upmarket Media. Another co-founder not here today, Mark, but oh my goodness, we have Chelsea in the room off camera. Hey, for you to, I'm for, here. Oh, I'm so happy. Chelsea, it's been like too long since you've been in the room for an Upmarket. Has it? I yeah, guess it's it been has. a while. It's been a while. Yeah. I know there's been a lot going on, but you know, and I've been doing all these PMRE episodes. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of PMRE, it's coming up uh, November 7th and 8th in, I think that's right, 7th and 8th in Las Vegas, Nevada. Um, and until September 30th, which is the end of this week, uh, if you're listening to it when we're putting this out, you can get $75 off registration if you use the code upmarket at check out. So go to pmreconference.com and do that. And and I am kind of saying that in the front because Chelsea, I think we have a kind of a special episode today. Yeah, yeah. we do. And so I think we're going <laughs> to kind of dispense with our normal format okay? Uh, just for, for many reasons. Um, so that said, I do, because we're not going to have an ad break or social media sidebar. So I do want to shout out Second Floor App, loyal sponsor of a market podcast, the quickest, easiest, and cost-effective way to create floor plans. You can get in there with their handy app and create a floor plan in minutes and then deliver it on site to the realtor. If that, if you so desire, you can go to secondfloorapp.com slash upmarket and you can get a free month. Well, that's exciting. And then, you know, since we're not doing the social media sidebar, I just want to say, take a sec to say a market pod across all social media. You can go to upmarketpod.com. We also have our course on how to scale your real estate media business. And that's at upmarketcourse.com. You can book a 15 minute call with me to ask me any questions. And I'm happy to give you a super great discount code for that. Right. I think that's everything. I think so. Whew. Here we go. What do we, I, okay. What All are we right. going to talk about today? Oh, oh, someone else piped up. Oh, who's that? Oh, wow, geez. <laughs> okay. So August 1st, August 2nd, August 1st, the, the, the industry was rocked by news of Zillow buying out Aereo, who Aereo for us has been uh, our inaugural uh, presenting sponsor, has been there the whole way, one of the biggest supporters out there of a market pod. And uh, it put us in a little awkward spot because we had been extremely critical of Zillow on the podcast. And so I immediately was like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, Mark and, and you can listen to that episode. I think it's episode 31. Uh, if you want the full backstory on this and then Mark and I did our hot takes, uh, episode a couple episodes ago of our reaction to this news of the buyout. And I'm so happy today that we can actually talk about it and actually get information from the source. And so here with us now is the former CEO of Aereo, now the head of Aereo. It's Brannick Wikes and Brannick, thank you for coming all the way to Ojai. Thank be you, on the podcast. So I, I think there's an elephant in the room and I think we should just go ahead and talk about that elephant first, if that's okay. Yeah. I'm excited to jump in. <laughs> Thanks for, for having me out here. Yeah, it's, no uh, problem. So the, the whole thing is that basically the real estate media industry, I think, and, and clients of areas, especially when they first heard the news that Zillow's buying area, we're extremely upset because basically now we are paying money to Zillow, who is in our view, trying to put us out of business with their showing time plus brand that is coming into markets and undercutting our prices and trying to, you know, in, in our view, Zillow wants to squash the independent real estate media provider. And now our heroes, Aereo, the people, you guys were one of us, right? You guys, are, this was real estate photographers making a platform for real estate photographers. And it felt like you sold out and sold us out as clients. I mean, what, what is your answer to that? Yeah. Well, thank you for having me on. And I think probably a good place for us to start is, you know, why did Zillow buy Aereo? Yes. We can kind of dive in from there on that front. And ultimately a great first question here is what does Zillow want to accomplish? What is Zillow's kind of ultimate goal? And for Zillow, one of their biggest North Stars is to make the best home shopping experience in the world. Right. They want to have a, a great website for consumers to browse properties, discover homes, and ultimately, hopefully, transact with ease. 
Mm-hmm. So that's a real like guiding and, principle and, to Zillow. Yeah, and all. they kind of want to have like, they kind of want to control, I mean, in a way control, like a cynical view would be to control the process it, 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 well, as th- much as possible. Right. I mean, I think Zillow's always tried to put the consumers first and just have the easiest, best process for people. And I think that's why a lot of consumers and, and people like Zillow and right. sites like that to, to understand real estate and get into the process of home buying. So I think that's a helpful North Star for us to start at. And we think about even just the role of the photographer kind of at an abstract level. It's to work with the agent to help kind of market and promote Mm -hmm. that property. And I think from our perspective, from like a North Star here, there's a lot of alignment at a a big picture of, okay, how can we drive a great consumer experience? Mm -hmm. And media has an important part to place to that. And the the consumer and the the home buyers and sellers. Yes, Yes, exactly. And I think one of the most important parts of the home shopping experience is the media. It's the pictures, it's the videos, it's the floor plans, the 3D tours. And I think we've seen this only continue to grow over the past few years, right? Especially yeah, after course. COVID, this has been a big impact on everyone's business. With the acquisition of Aereo, I think this is Zill really coming out and saying, hey, photographers are a really important part of our industry. Right. We love the mission that Aereo has done historically. We want to continue on that mission. We want to keep mm-hmm. building great software for independent photographers. And we want right. to invest in that because we see this being an important thing for the whole industry. Right. But at the same time, they're also wanting to compete with us. And that's, that's the, I think the biggest thing. And I think the thing that the most people have the problem with is right. is now I'm giving my money to Zillow and then Zillow is using that money to fund my competitors and my competitors being the showing time plus, uh, you, you know, outfit. Right. Yeah. So I think that's, that's where it's like, you know, and you have to, you know, like when you announced, I mean, you, you saw the feedback and I mean, that's the thing on everyone's mind. Right. And so how, like, but is that true? Is our money basically going into that pot that then is being used against us? Right. I mean, I can say clearly and confidently Zillow wants to support independent photographers. We're continuing on our missions at Aereo, building great software for photographers, right. helping grow their business. All of that is, is continuing. Zillow does have a team of photographers and I, I had a lot of these same questions myself. And one of the big goals or just the original intents of that team, mm-hmm. I think it started about last year, maybe, or, yeah. or something around then prior to my time at, at Zillow. But right. one Which of the, has only been a month. Let's clarify oh yeah, so that, I, right? I've only yeah. been at Zillow for, for a month. So we're still in the kind of learning yeah. phase on both sides. Um, but one of the early intents of that team was for agents that would like to order 3D tours or interactive floor plans that they had an availability option out there. Mm -hmm. The intent was not to replace photographers at all. And I I think really, when we look at the investment they've made here with Aereo and backing us and bringing Mm -hmm. us into the ecosystem, it is to further the importance of, hey, we want to support independent photographers. We loved what Aereo was doing. Right. Let's continue that. And I think this is a much bigger step towards that and what we want to accomplish long term. Right. But then, you know, and, and then the other thing that we're all thinking is that now, because Aereo knows everything about our businesses, right? If we're using it, they know who our clients are. They know what they're ordering. They know how much they're, we're charging for everything. They know, you know, how many listings there is. They know all this stuff. And now uh, 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 Showing Time Plus has that data and they can use it against us, right? I mean, that's that's the biggest fear is that, you know, and, and I know anecdotally, you're seeing a lot of people in the Facebook group sitting there saying, well, since... Uh, you know, since the merger, uh, you know, uh, Showing Time Plus has been calling all my top clients and, uh, you know, uh, undercutting my prices and stuff. And so is that data being shared with them? And, and if so, how are they using it? I think one of the biggest questions I got from clients and people in general is concern over specifically their customer list data that they yeah. have in, in the area accounts. Sure. We've come out very clearly and succinctly and stated like, no, that data is not being used for sales. They're not calling your customers. That is your data and your account there. Um, we've, we've put that out there online too. That was a big, important thing for me of let's get this out here. Let's not just my words or an email, like let's, let's publicly state that. So it's out there. We can maybe link to that in the podcast notes sure. for people to, to go check out. And I think it's a very, we think about it and I, I kind of chuckle a little bit when I think about it, it's like, well, okay, yes, that's a very fair top level concern, but let's pause for a second. Every agent in the country has their own profile on Zillow.com. Every listing right. already goes through those profiles and on Zillow.com. Zillow already has access to an enormous right. amount of data on that side. Like that is not, that's not the intent here with mm-hmm. that. Zillow really wants to have a future where there's a great home shopping experience. They know that rich media, pictures, videos, mm-hmm. interactive floor plans is something that benefits consumers. 
and they want to figure out ways that they can drive that across the whole industry. And our work here with photographers is an important part of that. Right. Well, and do you think that the data that you have, was that a value add for Zillow? I mean, are the, what, you know, are they looking at that in, in, you know, because I think it clearly states in your, in the terms of service that then people were, you know, posting online that we all, you know, clicked on when we became aerial users is that, um, you know, the data, that you have of ours is an asset that then can be transferred in the, in a sale. If I, if I, if I'm remembering that correctly. And I mean, does Zillow see it that way? Well, I mean, we've already said too, I mean, we've clarified right. like you own your pictures. Those are your, your pictures. Yes, right. Absolutely. And like we talked about the client list data, right. So right. we kind of break down these broader concepts. Right. Um, that's kind of where we're at on those sides. Um, and broader level, I think when we look at what do we want to do, we really want to figure out how can we help drive and advance this forward for everyone. I think when I look at the industry, photographers have largely sat kind of on their own out to right. the side historically. I would love to. And this is why I started Aereo to begin with of how can we get photographers more involved in the industry as a whole? And the best kind of things that we can do are, are features and integrations and benefits that help photographers, that help agents, that help consumers. That win-win scenario is where we want to focus. And where I'm really excited for in the future. Um, uh, okay. So wh like where, I mean, what does Zillow see for the, for the Aereo brand? I mean, and, and, and I know you guys said that Aereo is going to be basically a standalone brand within Zillow still, or it's, or then I was rereading the, the initial press release this morning and it's actually, you're in the showing time plus. Yeah. So this might universe, be a good opportunity I, to yes. kind of frame how things work. So yes. there is the Zill.com brand that I think all like consumers, people that go shopping for homes now, yes. um, there's Zill.com, there's Trulia, all those kind of consumer front facing right. pieces. And, and Trulia is owned by Zillow. I mean, they have a lot of tentacles out there, right? In terms of, yeah. So you have those consumer sides of things. And then there is the relatively new B2B software part of Zillow. That's called Showing Time Plus. So Showing Time Plus actually encapsulates a whole lot of different software products, products that are for agents, for brokers, for MLSs, and now for photographers with mm -hmm. Aereo. So the Aereo team is joining that Showing Time Plus side of, of Zillow, and that's where mm -hmm. we're working in that kind of B2B business tool space. Okay. And then are, are you... Like when, and then, uh, so when I say show and 10 plus, and I think that's what everyone's showing 10 plus is calling our clients and, you know, undercutting our prices that it's, it, it, it's a segment of showing 10 plus that it, right. It, and it's, and we were talking about yesterday, it was it listing media services. Is that correct? Correct. There is a team it's called listing media services or LMS. Mm -hmm. That is those internal photographers that we talked about. Mm -hmm. Um, we are part of showing time plus though, which is right. the kind of this. B2B software piece. Right. And so the LMS then is a client of Aereo. Correct. Yeah. Just like any other client, there's really no special treatment there. It's just like any other business that we work with. Okay. And then, um, what, and, and so how much autonomy do you have, uh, in the space? I mean, are you just taking orders from the CEO or the, you know, whoever else of, of Zillow or, you know, what's the, you know, what's the mission for Aereo and, and how, yeah. and how do you get to, to guide that? Great question. And really, I mean, it's the same mission that we've always set on. Zill loved the work that we were doing at Aereo. They're like, wow, you guys know this space well. You understand it. You know how photographers operate. We like what you guys are doing. We want you to continue that here at Zillow. And mm -hmm. it was not a, a one-way street. You know, I think you read the press releases. It's like, oh, Zillow acquires Aereo. This was a two-way street. I really fundamentally believed that this was going to be the best thing for our customers and for the industry as a whole mm -hmm. of why we started Aereo. Like, I really think that we're in a better place now to accomplish a lot of those goals and, long term. And was this the plan when you started Aereo? I mean, the plan has always been to, one, build great software for real estate photographers. Mm -hmm. Can we help them run and hopefully grow their businesses? Right. That is mission number one. And mission number two for me, both coming in as a photographer before starting Aereo, was figuring out how can we get photographers to be a more kind of integrated part of the ecosystem? You know, in my mind, and I, I talk to consumers or even when people over the years and when I was a photographer, they come and ask, oh, what do you do? Oh, I'm a, a real estate photographer. Most people are like, oh, is that a job? Like most people, like right. they don't realize, right? They don't think about where does the, the content you see online come from? Then there's usually like a second follow-up question maybe of, oh, is that like a full-time job or your portrait photographer mm -hmm. or wedding? Like, no, we've got a whole industry of people doing right. this. And that was one of the big things I was excited for with this opportunity of Zillow, a, a huge, great name in, in real estate saying, hey, photographers have an important part to play in this ecosystem. Mm -hmm. We like what the Aereo team's doing. Can you guys come in and can you guys be that voice of photographers here 
And can you help us figure out what this future looks like? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, Zillow, yeah, has a a big name, but I also think, you know, to be honest, right? I mean, and you're aware of this, it's also a toxic brand within the real estate industry from the agent side and from the, from the uh, photographer side, right? And everyone has their own gripes. And mine has always been like, well, you know, they like real estate media professionals have helped build Zillow basically because we've had this media and I don't feel like we've been compensated for that. Right. And so it, it, then it, then it just kind of sticks in your craw, right? And you're like, Oh God. And now they've been, they've been using our images and now I'm going to be giving them money, you know, every month. And I think that's where, you know, it, it's almost an emotional thing, right? It's not even necessarily always a logical thing. Cause I think aligning with the big brand, with the big player in the industry is probably a pretty smart move. But then I think there's just some emotional hurdles for, for people to get over, to get, to go through, you know? Yeah. And you know, I can't speak to everyone's perspective on it, right? It varies quite a bit. I spoke to a lot of customers that were really excited for things to come. And a lot of people that already use, you know, 3d home maybe, or other things Mm -hmm. are like, Oh, can we make these things easier? Um, I think the biggest thing though, is the excitement around, all right, we've got a role to play there. Like we're no longer the outsiders, right? And not just we at Aereo, but hopefully on behalf of our customers and the industry as a whole, we're in a great position now to put forward, you know, the photographer perspective and work on a lot of things that I think would benefit everyone. Right. Well, and kind of coincidentally, or I think it was coincidentally, right before um, the acquisition, you did launch the full white labeling of of Aereo, right? Because I think one of the things I have heard from, from real estate photographers is like, well, if the agent knows that I'm giving, you know, that, that uh, this is the software we use as part of the Zillow family, they're going to be pissed off because you know, uh, the, the, there's the agents can be pissed at Zillow for, for different reasons. And, and so they like photographers, I think sometimes feel that, you know, it's the Z word that you don't want to say around your agents because you know, steam starts coming out of their ears. And so if that is an issue for you, if there is like a PR, problem with Zillow with your clients, there is now full white labeling on Aereo. So, you know, they're, they're, they don't have to know. The full white labeling, <laughs> so we launched that this summer. Yeah. Um, it was been in the works for a long time. Yeah, so yeah. like that was well underway for, yeah. for years. It was honestly. a coincidence. Um, it was well underway for years that we want to do it. And I mean, I think it's a great testament. We want to build great software that is fully white labeled, configurable to whatever business settings you want from both mm-hmm. like the, the back end system to also how you present your business to your customers. And I, the reason for that is that I think it benefits photographers and that's our mission. We want to build great software for photographers and continue down those paths of how can we make improvements and increase ways for photographers to keep growing their business. Right. Right. Well, and and do you, so what is, or can you speak to it even, what is the mission of listing media services? in terms of how do they want to grow, you know, what is, what is their growth potential and their growth, you know, the, their growth target. And I mean, I, I, because I had a conversation with the head of listing media services a few months ago when we were kind of talking about coming on the podcast, which kind of set the whole, that whole thing in motion. And, you know, he was saying to me that it, it's basically, they want to elevate the, the quality of stuff that is, that is uh, of the media that's out there. And so they want to, they're really targeting these agents who are shooting on their iPhones, their own photos and, and, you know, getting that, they called it low hanging fruit where it's, you know, people who aren't using, um, their, their services. And, and he was saying, well, you know, look, we're, we're not going after those high producers because they already have relationships with photographers and it's, and just on a practical level, it's like, it's really hard for them to break that relationship. If, if we are doing a good job, you know, as real estate media professionals, our clients love us, but it does seem they are kind of attacking those, uh, um, in that space too, of trying to get, and it makes sense, right? Because so many top producers are top producers because they're actually getting leads from Zillow and they're, they're already in the ecosystem and paying Zillow. And so I think when Zillow, when listing media services comes to them and says, Hey, look, as part of this suite of services that you're going to get when you're paying for leads, you use our media and you're going to get even more boosted or, you know, I don't know what the pitch is, but do you have any kind of inside information on, on how they're going about that their business? Honestly, on many fronts, like I'm not, I haven't been involved in that stuff. I'm still <laughs> right. four or five weeks into Zillow. So I'm still <laughs> right. getting up to speed. You don't on know everything. Fronts. No, Brandon? I, I uh, unfortunately <laughs> don't as much as I, I wish I knew. Right. Um, so on, on that side, I mean, and I think one thing I hope is a, a good takeaway today is that in many ways, we're kind of entering a new chapter here at Zillow between photographers and Aereo right. and, and how this works. And, right. you know, historically I haven't been involved in those decisions and how those things work. And, Right. But I can kind of confidently say here that 
we are involved going forward. And I right. think we're bringing a lot of the photographer's perspective. And even just the acquisition at face value of Aereo, I think was a great sign to Zill's commitment of, hey, independent photographers matter. We value these businesses mm -hmm. and we want to figure out ways to continue to help them. Yeah. I, and I think that the, the cynics look at it and some, and I have, I, and I look at this from all sides, right? And I think it kind of came through in, in our episode a few weeks ago of where, you know, I, okay, I can be up in arms about this, that, and the other thing, but I think ultimately it, it's, it's much more nuanced than that. And, and, um, you know, but the cynic in you says like, well, uh, Ariel bought that in order to prop up that listing, to, to prop up that listing side and, 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 you know, to become, you know, that they will now want to control everything and they want to become the biggest real estate photography brand. And they're going to leverage the technology and expertise of Aereo in order to prop up listing media services. I mean, that's what it kind of feels like at, at a, at a certain well, point. I think we kind of venture here into what I call the, the what if game, right? Yes. And this is what I saw oh, all, I love, across, that's, all, that's, all across, that's Facebook all across Facebook podcast is <laughs> of like the what if game, right? Of what if this happens? What if that happens? happens? What if yes. something changes? Yes. Right. And I think when I think of that though, one of the realities is you can play the what if game with any company, regardless right. of its area or Zillow or any other company you may work with. There's always this unknown. What if that's not unique to us in this situation? What my hope is, is that people can both recognize here that Aereo has made huge commitments over the last five years to the community, to the work mm -hmm. that we've done, to our software, to continuing to advance things. We want to continue and double down on that. And that's why I'm here talking to you is to make sure right. that that is clearly heard by people. It will take a little bit of time here as things get going. And like we mentioned, I'm only five weeks yeah. into everything, but we do have that commitment to independent photographers. That is the mission. That is why I'm there every right. day. And that's why I'm still going forward. Like, I don't think I've set out and finished what I wanted to when I started area, we're very much in right. still the early chapters. Right. Well, and that's, and, and do you have, I mean, do you, can you speak to, um, what your personal plan is in, in terms of being involved with Aereo? I mean, yeah. do you have, do you have a contract for a set number of years? Is it just kind of open-ended or, you know, what, what personally, where are you at? Yeah. My current title is director of Aereo. So it's oh, really it's not head of Aereo. Okay, not I'm head sorry. of Aereo. It's director of Aereo. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I mean, functionally though, running the Aereo team as we were really right. nothing's changed in the last three months mm -hmm. outside of like continued improvements. Like we've right. continued on all fronts of the business. So, and we want to keep doubling down and tripling right. down on our continued mission on that side. And we kind of referenced this earlier, but one of my big missions of even starting Aero to begin with was both personally seeing the value that photographers bring to agents in the ecosystem and figuring out new and novel ways that we can accomplish that with everyone. We don't have all the answers here today, right? It's going to take some time, but I mean, that's why I like doing things like this. This is why I talk to so many photographers still, why we're active online is getting insights and feedback and figuring out, okay, what does this look like going mm -hmm. forward? There's no perfect plan. It's going to take some time and input to make sure we get there for everyone. Right. Well, I, I, cause I, cause I think, and, and this does end up getting to the, to more what ifs, but I think that, you know, having you involved and you still be in the face of it and coming out and communicating with people and, and ultimately I think what it's going to be is you're, you're going to have to say to us, Hey man, trust me. I get it. I get all this stuff that you're thinking, but you know, it, because you, you're kind of saying like, well, that's not how it is. And that's not the intention. You know, we're not trying to put you out of business. We're not trying to do this. We're not trying to do that. And I believe you, I a hundred percent believe you, but what happens, you know, in a year when brand is gone. And, and, and I think part of what, what the distrust of, of the whole thing with Zillow is, is that, you know, there's a, a perception that it's, they're just going to throw a bunch of stuff against the wall and whatever sticks is, is maybe what's going to go. And they, they're always changing directions. Well, they're boosting video. Oh, now they're not boosting video. They're boosting 3d. They're doing this, they're doing that. And in so many people in our industry feel a little jerked around by it. So how, you know, we want to make sure that, that our, the area that we like doesn't get Zillow fied, yeah. you know, into, into a product that is not good anymore. Right. Yeah. A lot, a lot of questions there. <laughs> <laughs> in that statement. Yeah. Um, I think, the thing I like to look at is just that North Star, right? And we talked about Zill's North Star of making a great consumer experience. That kind of trickles down into everything that Zill does. And for right. us, a big North Star for Aereo was you know, that photographer experience. And I ask of, of all of our customers and others of look at you know what I'm saying today, what we've done historically and where we're right. at. You know, We could play that what if game, but yeah. the reality is photographers are important. Zill mm -hmm. wants us to be that voice of photographer internally. And that's that's my role to play there. Right. Is it the intention that Aereo is going to remain platform agnostic in terms of like uh, that, 
you know, we can still use Matterport or iGuide or, you know, any of these other services because those compete directly with the Zillow 3D product. Right. And so, I mean, is there, I mean, is that kind of on the table that, that these, that you're not going to support those other services? Yeah. I mean, it, it goes back to the North star of doing what's best for consumers and we right. know consumers love Matterport, iGuide, these other vendors, we've supported them historically at area. Yes. We support them today. Yes. Like we want to do what's best for our customers and everyone and, and support those things that are important to their businesses. Right. And I think people would actually be surprised even like Zillow 3d home, for example, that's the product that Zillow has. That product is not just on Zillow, it's syndicated out to any other website that wants to have it. I believe there's a, a big partnership with Redfin as well that syndicates some of that. Mm -hmm. Like Zillow wants to not just have these things on Zillow.com, but really advance right. it for the whole whole ecosystem. Well, right. I mean, they're, they, they've developed this technology. They want people to use it. And, and yeah, and it all, you know, it ends up funneling back to Zillow and, you know, even if it's just branding, right? Um, what is the plan? I mean, I, I, other than, you know, okay, we're going to keep improving Aereo. I mean, what's like, you know, is there like a five-year plan for, and it, it goes into the what ifs, but as, as part of your business, I know you're planning that stuff out. I mean, you should be, if you're doing, if you're running a good business. So, you know, where, where do we, where do we see Aereo in one, three and five years? Yeah. Honestly, I've never planned out a five year timeline. <laughs> I've, I've never had well, that it, long It wasn't plan. after five years you <laughs> sell to Zillow. That wasn't the plan. No, no. <laughs> I would never plan that that far in advance, in part because it's an exciting time out there right now. Things are changing quickly, right, mm -hmm. on, on all fronts. And we look at what COVID did. I think no one saw that coming. And also the impact it had on real estate media and driving forward new types of media. And we've got so many advancements just coming out all the time. From the perspective of what we're trying to do, though, is keeping photographers front and center in the aerial platform, continuing to build tools. I don't know which new technologies are coming or which way things are going to go. But if we can keep building a great platform for businesses to run on, to configure, to customize, to brand to themselves, that's a huge win for, for everyone. And that is that is the plan. That is what we're going to continue to do. Now, in terms of specific timelines, I've got no specific right. goals for you know one, three, five years outside of making sure we're serving our customers in the ecosystem as well as we can. We haven't really talked about, you know, the price. So the reported price of the sale, right, and if you, it's reported by Zillow in their filings, is $35 million. And, um, and you know, it's a lot of money, right, for for any kind of company. And and I, I, we were speculating on, you know, why they they would pay that much. And, and we didn't think it was for the data. I mean, is there uh, some other, and I, obviously if there is, you're not going to, you know, totally spill the beans, but is there some other... Uh, backend technology or something that that is proprietary to Aereo that that Zillow really saw as something um, that that was worth investing big money in, or is it the relationships? Is it the is it the the knowledge? I mean, what, you know, what what did they see? Why did they want to buy Aereo? Yeah, I think one of the and I may sound slightly biased in, in stating this, but really, like myself, Matt, Brendan, we worked as photographers. Originally, we understood this industry deeply. Like we built the software from our own perspective of going through it. I really think Zillow values that a lot of, mm -hmm. Hey, we know this is an important part of the real estate industry. We want to have people on the Zillow team that understand that at a personal level and a nuanced level that have gone through that. And we want them to continue on that side. And I think the overall investment acquisition here was a great testament to that of both mm -hmm. the work we've done in the past, but also kind of what we set out to do going forward. Right. It, can you give me the play by play on how this happened? Like when you started thinking about it or negotiating or talking about it and who approached who and when, and how did it all shake out? Yeah. I mean, there's never a perfect timeline for these things, right? They take time and it happens kind of over, over a long period. I actually originally reached out to Zillow over a year ago, wondering just at a high level, Hey, are there ways that we could work together with you guys for photographers? We have all these photographers we work with. We think there could be a, a lot of ways that we could benefit and figure out integrations or, or things that could help both photographers and agents and consumers. So we reached out about a, a year ago and over the, the next kind of 12 months, we got to know people on the Zillow side, they got to know us. And I think what we both realized was there was a lot of alignment here of mm -hmm. what we could do together and being able to do that faster and better and deliver a great experience to everyone. Mm -hmm. Was this your decision or was it, I mean, was it just one of these things that, that just at a certain point seemed inevitable and everyone on the board got about, you know, that the whole board just kind of came into agreement because it just like, it, it, it felt like you had to do it or, or was it, or did you feel pressure from your investors to have to do it? Right. Because they've invested all this money in the company. Hey, this is, we can cash out. We can, you know, we can do this. I mean, was there, you know, what were the competing forces for you that, that led to the decision other than wanting to help photographers? 
Yeah. Obviously at a base level in any big decision, you get all the right inputs from, from everyone. But I mean, I think I can confidently and publicly say like, this was ultimately my call at the end of the day of, do I think this is the best direction? And yes. And i still believe it is the best direction for everyone, including our customers and the industry as a whole. You know, I think I saw for too long things were like the photography media side of the industry kind of, we've got our own bubble on some side of things. Right. Right. Um, historically large portals were really only able to interact with the large national photography companies as well. Mm -hmm. At Aereo, we've built a great base of customers of all sizes and all ranges and a lot of regional independent brands. Like this is a really great opportunity for us to bring that perspective into Zillow and the whole mm -hmm. ecosystem. And for me, I was like, boy, I'd rather spend my time and years further advancing that, working with the industry, not kind of doing our own thing. And that was a big part of the decision for me. Um, so what's going to be, so when you, you do want to grow the independent photography business, you want to help our businesses, what's going to be the value add at this point now with aligning with Zillow? What is, how is upmarket media going to benefit other than having a much larger budget for advertising? <laughs> <laughs> well, on, on one like objective level, just in terms of resources, right? We were a small, starty, scrappy startup on some sides. Right. We've got access to a lot of resources from support to engineering to just like nuanced understanding of how real estate works that I think can really benefit both our software and our customer base and hopefully continue to provide great support for you guys. We were talking about hopefully standing up account managers. There's a lot of things that I think will be really good for our whole customer base on that mm -hmm. side. And then honestly, in the coming months here, we have a lot of work to do of just figuring out what's even possible and understanding, you know, we're only five mm -hmm. or six weeks into Zillow right now. It took us about five years to build Aereo to the point where we're at today. I, we've got a lot of work to do of figuring out, okay, what does this look like for those future iterations? And mm -hmm. I by no means have all of the answers today, but I think in the past we've shown people, hey, Aereo team has, has gone to the ground and talked to people and done visits in person and really tried to understand the pain points of businesses. And that is what I want to continue to do at Zillow. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, then is there plans? Because I, I know a lot of real estate media people do feel that being able to kind of sell that boosting on Zillow or, you know, that we're going to, that, that basically if you use us, you're going to be in better with, with, with Zillow. I mean, is that kind of, is there going to be these synergies happening with Aereo so that, that, Aereo users can have access to some of these more premium Zillow, uh, you know, offerings. Yeah. Honestly, I'm not perfectly aware of like all the intricacies of, of what happens on kind of the consumer display side with that. Mm -hmm. But I do yeah, believe today that and we can, we can fact check this after, but I do believe today that if you have an interactive floor plan or a 3d mm -hmm. tour, regardless of who provides it, maybe it's Zillow or mm -hmm. an independent photographer, they all get that same kind of increased, uh -huh. um, visibility right. on, on the portal. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's across the board available to anyone today. Right. That's not something that's unique to any one party. Right. And, but isn't listing media services kind of uh, um, also uh, th that's what they're saying is a value add, uh, some sort of better place. It's the same value there. add that any photographer could offer today. So if any photographer it out is. there offers interactive floor plans or 3d tours, it's the same value. It's the add same. As, yes. So, exactly. the, so they There's don't no have a leg treatment. up on us in terms of, of, no, of it's the same, placement. which I think is indicative of, what Zillow wants to accomplish as a whole. They want to open up stuff to the whole industry. And if rich media advances the consumer experience and it's great for people, they want to make that available to as many people as possible. And again, you know, it, getting into the what ifs a little bit, but one of the fears that we have is that, um, that, you know, in the kind of modern like tech company landscape, because Aereo is a tech company, right? And so that you, in a way, you can get swallowed up by these larger companies who are who are maybe buying your company as a defensive maneuver, and where you kind of stop innovating. But it sounds like the mission of Aereo is to continue innovating. I mean, is is that where we're going? I mean, is there? Yes. I mean, do you have like a big pipeline of these grand projects that you do want to do in terms of years? You're saying, well, we don't really know how we can, you know, leverage Zillow, but. Um, you know, just on the area side. Of yeah. Things. Just on the area yeah. side. Yeah. Yeah. I'm probably the harshest critic of our own product. Honestly, like uh -huh. a firm believer, you can't fall in love with your own products. You gotta, right. you gotta keep a good oh, distance. This is, this of, is my of favorite podcast actually. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, and when I think of the area product, I think one, we did a great initial start of, okay, how can we make it easy to deliver media? You have someone that makes media. We have someone that consumes it. Let's make it easy to deliver. And then over the years, we started adding on more sort of invoicing functionality and workflow tools to it, order forms, white labeling now. In the last year, we made a big investment in mobile. I really mm -hmm. want to double down on that side. We've continued to ship a lot of improvements there. And I think on the mobile side, we were 
both the first company to launch mobile apps, both for you and your team to use, mm -hmm. but also for your clients to use. Right. Um, and today, I think we're the only company that has a iOS and Android app for free on the App Store for you to run your business on the go. It's called Aereo Go. Uh -huh. We launched that, kind of relaunched it this summer, actually, a whole right. new version of it. We really want to double down on that side of let's make it really easy for people to do the things that are important to their business while they're on the go out in the field, where I think if you look at someone's timetable, they probably spend 90% of their day out in the field if you're a photographer going around. Right. Very yeah, little sure. is actually spent at your computer. Right. Those are all areas we want to continue to invest in. We have the mm -hmm. white labeling front. I'm a, a firm believer that if we can kind of take the perspective of let's build a platform to let businesses customize and, and do what's best for their business because it varies a lot. There's no right one way to do something. If you're in California, it may be very different than if you're in Boston and yeah. you want to accomplish something. So if we can continue to do white labeling, more kind of customizable features around branding and marketing and marketing materials. And I mean, even when we look at historically marketing materials and property websites, when we started Aereo and came into this space, Pretty much every other software platform said, oh, this is a way for us to make money from photographers. We're going to charge an extra fee right. if you want to have a property website or a marketing material. Talkless. We went away with that model and we said, hey, well, photographers can have this just included in on the, this. We don't want to make more money from this. We think this benefits everyone. If photographers have great channels to showcase their works, whether that's a flyer or a postcard or a single property website. And those are just included across the board. And I know some businesses just have that then included on every listing. Others may just upsell it then, and they get to keep that extra margin on our yeah, platform. Yeah, we, we just include it. I mean, we're, we're really yeah. generous, generous people. So and I mean, we were it. talking about this a little bit yesterday of kind of the waves of the industry. You know, I think we started off with, you know, if we look at kind of different decades, there was a, a fundamental need of just let's get high quality pictures on properties. Mm -hmm. I think we're now in an era of how do you get rich media? How do you get pictures, videos, interactive floor plans, 3D tours, all these types of media onto every listing? I think the next big wave after that is how can we help enable agents to use all of this media that they have at their fingertips? Uh -huh. How can you get value out of that? That's a exciting future that I'm hoping software like ours can help photographers in. Right. Well, so do you have plans for that? I mean, I, I know like of, I mean, even just like helping our, our agents get the stuff onto the MLS, much less on their Instagram. I mean, is there, is there integrations coming that are going to be able to do that? Yeah. I mean, I would love to, to do anything that can help agents and photographers mm -hmm. in their business. I've got no, no formal plans on any of those fronts right now, but I mean, in many ways we've been doing that with, both property websites being included for free. That's a mm -hmm. great way for agents to share the media they get online. Our mobile apps that we have, especially the branded ones to your business. So mm -hmm. if you make your own, I think Upmarket yeah, has your, yeah. your own app in yeah. the app store. That was actually important because it now enabled an agent to download the files on the go. We right. saw so many agents that are ordering videos or other types of content needing to get it onto their phone to get it on their social media. Yeah, that, that's been the biggest upsell that we've been able, you know, the light bulb goes on for people. Yeah. So oh, use our app and you can download an individual photo to your phone and upload it to Instagram and they're like, oh my God. Yep, exactly. No more zip files. Like, yeah. I always chuckle, zip files. Everyone talks about all these fancy things, but one of yeah. the biggest challenges I think most agents in the country have is even just how do you open a zip file and, and move your content around? Yeah. If those that, are it the, is that basic. It is. And yeah, it is. Which, I, I mean, I think we have a lot of work as an industry to figure out solutions to these things and how we can help everyone. And I'm excited to be at Zillow and be a part of, of making that happen for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, so so then, you, so mobile is going to be a, a large part of, 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 where, of where you're heading. Yeah, we've, I mean, we've continued to invest heavily in mobile. I think we've been putting out some new mock-ups of some new flows that we have out there. Also, just on the workflow side, We've been putting out kind of examples and screenshots of what we can do on more of the advanced workflows for b bigger teams of mm -hmm. tracking different tasks and things on mm -hmm. that side. It's a really hard logistical problem to sort through, especially when every business does it differently. Right. But I think we have a lot of the basic elements today in mm -hmm. the platform and we'd love to continue working on those. And um, I well, know we usually post on Facebook or in different groups over the p previous months here, examples of some of those things. Well, yeah. I mean, as you're, I mean, having larger teams has got to be part of the plan for you because if, if you're successful, then we're all growing. And then we're, as we're all growing, we're going to have to expand our teams. Right. So, I mean, that yeah. seems like to be pretty damn key. No, it's actually been very fun for us to see. I think a lot of our early customers started us, started with us when they only had one or two people or it was just yeah. them. And some of these people have built really big businesses. And with that, uh, we've kind of grown the software to fit their business needs. And I think we could probably do a better job of 
more categorizing that on our side and making it mm -hmm. easier, whether you're a solo shooter, maybe you want to stay a solo shooter, yeah, which yeah. is great. It's yeah. up to you on how you want to run your business. Or if you're a large team and you need more of the logistics tools to manage everything, that is all, all what we want to start tackling even more of. Right. Um, and so what, what else, I, I mean, where do you see, I mean, okay, uh, let's switch gears here just a little bit. Cause I know we are, as I mentioned in the beginning, we are coming up at PMRE mm -hmm. and, um, I know Ario is, uh, is going to be there. You're going to, you're personally going to be there because you, you're speaking. And then Aereo is of course, one of the, the flagship sponsors of, uh, of the event. Um, are you, you know, are you nervous? I, I mean, you prepared for the backlash. I, I mean, do you think, I don't know. People talk, no, a big, I'm excited. People, people talk a big game online, but then they get in person and they're like, Hey, Brandon, <laughs> I'm excited to be there. It's going to be fun. I'm speaking again. Yeah. Um, so, you know, last year I spoke and I, I did right before me, right before I, I you. didn't really, I yes. didn't really hear yours. And then you said yesterday, oh, I didn't really hear yours. I, was, I, <laughs> I think we both did a good yeah, job, thankfully. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I'll be speaking again. And last year actually really started, I came to Brandon and I was like, Hey, we sit in a unique position of, of working with a lot of photographers. Can we share some broader insights for how we think about the industry as a whole, trends that we see, things that we think would be actionable and insightful to business yeah. owners and the audience, which hopefully we did last last year. And I know that that talks online somewhere if people want to go check it out. So the plan is to, to double down and do that again. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I'm, I'm really excited now being part of Zillow. I think we've got a whole lot more insights that we can share. And even thinking about Zillow's got a team of economists and folks of you know, crunching the numbers on what does the, the housing industry look like as a whole. I would love mm -hmm. to share some insights from people like that and different perspectives, yeah. and especially well, right now. Yeah, I mean, that would be good. I, yeah. I, I want to know the future. Yeah, so. exactly. I think a lot of people do. And we look at the market right now. I mean, the listings are definitely down across mm -hmm. the country quite a bit. This is impacting a lot of businesses. It'd be great <laughs> if noticed. we can. Yeah, it's been, I mean, right now we're at pretty record lows in terms of both inventory mm -hmm. and then, you know, days on market is, is much longer as well. So Right. I think if we can start to, as an industry, understand those trends, those challenges, we can kind of start to adapt. And right. Well, do you have like a, a zestimate on when things are going to get better? I don't, unfortunately. So I oh, mean, see, if I, got, I had I a got magic Brandon ball. to crack a smile, first smile of the whole podcast, <laughs> but I, I, I did it. <laughs> if I had a, uh, a magic ball for that, I think that would be a, a very valuable, obviously. Um, but when we look at the things that are in our control, what we can focus on, a big message of mine last year in the presentation was looking at businesses that adopt more media. It's no longer mm -hmm. about just selling pictures. It's why the conference renamed itself as well. Right. We went from photography for real estate to photography and media for real estate. Right. There's this giant shift that's underway right now from photographers just not being just photographers, but to providing all the types of media. And we look at people like Dom who've published their numbers online mm -hmm. of upsells and other packages and kind of grouping things together to get a richer media experience. Agents like that, consumers like that, makes more money for photographers. That's a win-win all around. And for PMRE, I mean, are you even going to be able to focus on this? I mean, you've been so deep into uh, into this transition. I mean, are you going to have time to put together a really kick-ass presentation for PMRE? Yes. Okay. Yes. I mean, I'm biased, so I hope it's a great presentation. I hope yeah. people find a lot of value out of it. Yeah. Um, but I mean, this is what I'm spending every day doing, right? This is what right. I think about every day. Right. So. Well, you, and and you you were telling me that like because we uh, you know full disclosure you came to Ohio yesterday and we we hung out a little bit and and you were like yeah this is kind of my first day off in like three months, you know? And so I was like, and you're with like, Oh, I'm working hundred hour weeks. And I mean, it, it like, that's insane. Well, one, you got to take better care of yourself, buddy, but <laughs> we've got a lot of work to do though, which I mean, I'm excited for like when right. I have free time, like I choose to spend it on the business because I enjoy the work we're doing and I have fun with it, especially when it's benefiting our customers, the industry, I would, there's no other mm. place that I'd be spending my time right well, now. Well, How has your, um, then this may seem silly, like a silly question to you, but how has your mental health been about this whole thing? Cause I think I'm sure you were expecting some vitriol from certain quarters. And, and I know there has been a lot and I know, and I think once the, the number came out of how much it sold for, I think people are like, Oh, okay. Yeah, I get it now. And, and, and I think some of that went away and, and I know the temperature has definitely dropped uh, quite a bit on that, but I mean, it must be, I would think it must be hard to, to have this kind of a triumphant moment for your business to then be kind of raked over the coals. I mean, and I'm sure the people who are actually close to you understand that your family's happy for you, your friends are happy. The team's happy. But you know, when you get that kind of vitriol from the, the client base, I mean, how, how did that feel for you? 
Well, it's it's always tough to depends on your sample size, right? Right. If your sample size is Facebook, you know that's an interesting sample size. But I think right. the reality is most most of our customers, most of the business owners out there aren't aren't always on Facebook, right? That's wow. it's not the whole wow. the whole world is not on on Facebook. They're loss. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and I think too. I mean, for me, I I am very confident in the long term vision and this being a big win for everyone. I totally mm-hmm. recognize there's a lot of uncertainty and questions. That makes perfect sense for people to have. Um, you know, I've never taken anything personally on that side. I just right. try to show up every day, do the best job I can, and hopefully here communicate to people too what the intentions are and what we want to accomplish. And that gives me a lot of energy. Like personally, I'm feeling very energized these days to continue on all of that. Mm-hmm. Well, and 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 you know, I would think a little bit of pressure, right? Because you, you you can't let us down. <laughs> That's the <laughs> knock on wood. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, PMRE, that's great. And we're we're excited to hang out. And I think, and I know you're going to be an open book there. If anyone has any questions for you or just wants to talk to you, I mean, you're going to be there hanging out for days and, and, you know, I know you're you're open to people. Our whole team will be going in. we got a good crew coming in. So it'll be fun to see everyone in person. Yeah. And, um, but one of the things then that I was just thinking about that, that I did want to bring up was, um, AI and kind of, and that's been the big, one of the big topics. We wouldn't uh, be on a podcast in 2023 <laughs> yeah. If, yeah. if AI did not make its way into the No, and I think we were consumed with that. And then yeah. you got bought out by Zillow. And now it's like, oh yeah, now AI. But um, what, uh, uh, like, is Zillow developing any sort of AI for themselves? And are in, and I think one of the questions that I know people have had are, are our images now. And I know you say, hey, when you upload to Aereo now, you know, you still own them, you still everything, but is, are they getting scraped by anything in Zillow to like train AI or, you know, any, any of that type of thing? Yeah. I always chuckle at the, the spread of AI questions because yes. it seems to be, there's no yeah. formal definition. Everyone right. kind of puts everything well, into it's that. Artificial intelligence. Artificial yeah, intelligence. Yes. <laughs> right. Um, and I mean, we look at like historically, what does that even mean in terms of, of tooling and whatnot? Right. I'm an engineer. I built a lot of the, the early Aereo website in my mind, AI and tools like computer vision and how we understand images, these are all just tools. And the important thing is how can we use them to both help our customers and just help everyone as a whole, right? We think Mm -hmm. about, I think a great example is Photoshop. Look at Photoshop 10 years ago. Most photographers were probably spending a lot of time doing sky replacements, yeah. usually by hand in Photoshop. I never even learned how to do it. I was like, ah, I can't. I've talked to some photographers that were in Microsoft Paint way back in the day, Uh. going in pixel by pixel doing sky replacements. Well, now thanks to AI, that's baked into the newest version of Photoshop. Click of a button, businesses can now replace a sky just like that. Right. That is an awesome piece of innovation there. And I think as more innovation comes out, like we would love to incorporate and do anything we can that's going to help our customers save time, grow their business. Mm-hmm. And I think historically too, when we look at it, there's obviously a lot of concern around just AI in all industries and how does yeah. that impact people. I think historically though, technology is always really helped businesses continue to do more and also spend their time on the more important things. Like we, you shouldn't be wasting your time replacing a sky by hand, right? There's yeah. a better use of we your have time. Editors to, for that. You've got editors, but yeah. also just for how people spend their time of growing their businesses and whatnot. So I've got no idea what the, the, the future looks like for new technology coming out. But I think if there's anything we can do that is now innovative and now possible mm-hmm. because of AI, those would be great areas for us to invest in and incorporate. Right. So, but is Zillow using our images to train AI? I think that was the question. That was the question. Yeah. Um, I don't even know on on that side, personally, right. honestly. I mean, <laughs> I, I think it's kind of an open-ended question there, right? right, right. Yeah. Like, what, is, yeah. what does that mean? Yeah. Like, I know no, an I area, know. Yeah. one thing we've wanted to do, we haven't been able to do this, but it would be really awesome if you could search by, like, subject matter. That mm-hmm. would be a really cool feature of, hey, I want to search right. for all my photos that have fireplaces in it or pools. Right. That would be a really helpful feature for photographers. If we can do that, we should totally do that. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I, I think the fear is, is that AI is going to get trained by using all these real estate photos that are our copyrighted material. And so they're going to be trained. And so then, you know, whoever, what Zillow or Box Brownie or whoever is going to, you know, have an app on the phone where you just walk through and take a video and it's just going to produce real estate, you know, awesome real estate images, you know, 10 years from now. And it's going to be based on our intellectual property. Right. So, that, I mean, I mean, that's the fear. But of course, I mean, you don't. How well, I mean, I think know? we look historically, there's always been new technologies and yeah. photographers have both adapted their businesses, but they've grown quite a bit. I mean, this whole industry, if we rewind 15 years ago, yeah. 
it is in a very different place today, a much healthier, bigger place today. Yeah. I think that's just going to continue on all fronts. Yeah, but we, you know, we're going to get. I mean, the new iPhone just came out. We're going to be replaced, <laughs> so by by the phone and by AI. So you know, that's well, whatever. You know, it's, we'll have fun while it lasts. There should be a subtitle for sarcasm <laughs> right now. Yeah. Well, the uh, you know, but I think I think you mentioned yesterday we talked about that subject just a little bit of like you know who should be kind of worried is the editors more than anything, right? Because if you know if we can have AI generated workflows in Photoshop, like we can, you know, maybe all of a sudden we're editing in house again because it's, you know, it's only going to take, you know, five minutes to do a whole photo, to do a whole photo shoot. So. Yeah. It sounds like there's a lot of great tools coming out there and we'll see how it kind of impacts everyone, but I think it'll largely be a net benefit to the industry. Yeah. So Brendan, we're, we're, we're coming up on a, almost an hour here, so we should probably wind it down, you know, cause real estate photographers don't have time to listen to podcasts. They're never in the car or anything. Um, uh, but I did want to talk a little bit about uh, personally for you and how, uh, because I, I, all controversy about this aside, and even if there is controversy about it, I think it's a, a tremendous accomplishment that the three of you took this company just five years ago as basically kids, um, you know, in your dorm room, starting this thing to selling it for $35 million to Zillow. I mean, it, it, it's an unbelievable achievement. And, and I you know, how, how does it feel? I mean, how are you feeling? I mean, are you feeling accomplished? Are you feeling, you know, cause I know you have $35 million now in your bank account. So you must feel like super rich and, you know, and like you can buy anything you want and, you know, how, what's that like? Tell us, tell the rest of us how that, that what it's like. Well, we, we should clarify <laughs> that's not quite how it works. Oh, right? it doesn't. Uh, okay. That's, All right. That's not yeah. quite how it works. But I mean, I think as, I mean, as a business owner yourself, right. Yeah. I think you can understand like, yeah, there's a, there's a certain value and like, we're definitely proud of what we've built so far. Um, it was funny as I've been kind of reflecting and still processing on everything. I, I mean, in many ways, like my checklist of things I wanted to do with Aereo, like still is, is still incomplete, right? Like right. I'm still really excited for the stuff to come on those fronts. Um, but when we look back, I mean, we have a great foundation here. We built a great product, a, right. a great team of people. Um, and we had great support from our customers over the years. Like that was very fun. And I'm even more excited just to double down on that and keep it going here forward. Yeah. Well, and you, you were telling me yesterday and I, I think I mentioned on the last podcast that, you know, you came to Las Vegas for that first, you know, then PFRE, right. When you were the first sponsor and you were like, Oh, I had a max credit card because that was the only way I could afford the sponsorship. It was a risky first year. We, we did, we were, um, we really didn't have many customers that first year. I think it was 2019. You know, we had a handful of photographers using the product um, we'd seen this conference starting to kind of start up in the community. Brandon was kind of putting mm -hmm. pieces of the puzzle together. Um, and I mean, we were just out of college at that point. So it was, uh, it was definitely a little bit of a gamble getting a credit <laughs> card and, and going for it, but we worked really hard and I, I think we were able to show up and I think we were both able to show people the value and what we were building and also just communicate that mission of what we want to do long-term. And I'm very grateful people were mm -hmm. willing to take a bet on us and become those early customers and, and work with us over the years. Well, what is still on the list then? You know, you, you have this list of things you want to accomplish. Yeah. What haven't you accomplished? Yeah. I mean, there's just the, the base software side of things. Like I think we have a lot of work to do on mobile still going deeper on workflows for your whole business. I think we could do a better job of giving you that kind of high level sense as a business owner of like how things are going and how do you need to, react as a business owner in your own business, right? I think there's a, a lot of work we can do on that side, but also really more broadly speaking about the role of photographers in the real estate ecosystem. Like I think we're even seeing with the this new conference here that really it's a young conference still, the yeah. PMRE conference, it's about five years old. Like that was a big step for the industry of kind of formalizing this as more of a profession and yeah. really spreading the word too about what people and photographers do in the real estate ecosystem. I think Zillow acquiring area is a, a further step in that direction, which is really exciting. Like, and I want to make sure we keep taking those steps towards helping this profession, helping legitimize it and helping communicate what is the value that photographers provide and what is that role that they're there to play. Mm -hmm. um, but, the, it, it, but there's no like one big, you know, piece of, of, I don't know, functionality or something that, that is really on that list for you. I, you know, no, I, I think I wanna, unfortunately, I it's like my, the big uh, thing. unfortunately, it may be my curse. I feel like it's never good enough, right? Like right. we're going to keep working on it on all fronts. So it's definitely never, I never want to take the foot off the gas on those things. But I think in the coming months and years here, we're going to have a lot of exciting stuff and obviously we'll be, we'll be talking and making sure we're communicating that with everyone. Yeah. So, so what do you think? Should we still have Aereo sponsor the podcast? 
Well, I, I think that is a, a business decision for best well, to discuss I, off the air on that side. Um, but I mean, what you guys have done here yeah. on the podcast has been great, right? And I think we've oh, always tried to support anything that can help better the industry as a whole. Yeah. That provides helpful tactile information for people too. I think that was a, a key thing yeah. with the Up Market podcast. You guys are providing like tactile information to how to grow and scale your business and you know coming in with interviews of subject matter experts on various topics like that has been a great yeah. win for everyone i mean you know our goal has really been to learn something on every episode too you yeah. know and, and 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 sometimes i mean just sitting down and having that space to talk about things even if it's just mark and i and, and you know chelsea on the podcast is like we can actually kind of hone in on on something that we've been thinking about that that we hadn't really thought about in that way because we're doing the podcast so you know i think when we when it feels like we benefit from the podcast, benefit from the podcast, then I think you know other other people do too. Yeah, so. that's actually when when I interview people, that's my favorite way to kind of walk away from the interview. I'm like, did I learn something there? And if you do, I think that is always a great indication about the person and what you're talking about and mm-hmm. everything to come. Mm-hmm. Do you think we learned? What did you learn today? <laughs> <laughs> I learned that Ojai, California is stunning and beautiful. Oh, oh, like, right. It is a fantastic place. I really, I was flying to LA and I was like, I don't know where I'm going. I plugged in the address and, yeah. and drove north here and it is unbelievable. Oh my goodness. Oh, all right. Well, thank Well, they, I can't take credit for that, but I, I did choose to live here. Good Ch- choice. Chelsea, we have good, we have good taste. Yes, we do. <laughs> of course. Um, I don't know, man. I guess that's like, I feel like there's some, something else I'm missing, but you know what, you know, Brennick, and I do want to say, you know, thank you for your support of the podcast, you know, from the very beginning. And it really has, it's meant a lot. I mean, it's obviously given us a financial footing for this thing. And, um, and we've always been very, um, you know, proud to be aligned with Aereo. We feel like you guys have been, you know, at the forefront of innovation and, and, at, you know, and, and, and really trying to do the right thing for your clients. And I, and I think, you know, that's why part of the whole Zillow take, not takeover, but the acquisition has, you know, parts of that have been hard to swallow because it does kind of feel like, you know, okay, the evil empires, you know, swallowing us up. But then, you know, I, I think if you do, step back and kind of realize, you know, and it's almost like you're, and I think you put it like now photographers have a seat at the table. Right. And, and I was kind of like, well, maybe it's the kid's table, but you know, at least you're in the room. Right. And, and, and it it is almost like, you know, to have someone on the inside to kind of stay, you you know, stand up for us. I mean, I I think is a good thing. And, and I mean, in, and you can love or hate Zillow, but there's no denying their place in the industry and they're not going away. And so not, and it's not even a, if you can't beat them, join them thing, but it's just about what it being realistic about what the lands landscape is. Yeah. Yeah, And I, I, you know, thank you for having me on here today. It's been fun jumping into more of the questions and hopefully helpful for people to hear from me kind of firsthand, Yeah, you know, what is a lot of the intentions here? What are the goals? Right. And for me, a big takeaway of this whole thing is the importance of photographers in that ecosystem, right? Zillow is an important part of real estate. And I think they're recognizing that important part that photographers have to play. Aereo team is very early still at Zillow. So some things are going to take some time as we get into it all, but I'm very excited for that future and, and being there and helping contribute that perspective as photographer myself and running Aereo and what we can do on behalf of our customers in the industry. All right. Well, thank you, Brandon. Thank you. So you come on all, you came all the way out just to do the podcast from Austin. And so I, you know, that was a big thing and you know, we appreciate it. It's been fun. Yeah, it has. Thank you. All right. You got it. Upmarket is a production of Upmarket Studios. This episode was produced by Chelsea Froelich and edited by Bethany Diedrich. Thank you so much for listening. And we really hope you listen to the next one too. In the meantime, our wish for you is to not have to shoot any Friday night twilight shoots. Thank you for everything. Mm